Kuti Pakrip is a cabinet area in the midst of a rich primary forest of the Northern Range. It is managed by two vehicles and serves as a resting point or destination for hikers, tourists, or hunters along the North Coast. Access routes are either the sea or nature trails. A boat ride from the nearest fishing village, Blanchiers, will take 40 minutes. The average person thinks about 4 to 5 hours from the three main trails originating from Blanchiers, Matlot, and Brasso Paria. Trails originated from Amerindians and later further developed through the use of donkey carts during post colonial times for transport of goods, since at that time the North Coast was an active port. I live in Leicester Bay, I live in the East of Africa. What about Takarib? Well, Takarib has real history. Mm -hmm. Starting from the ancient days when people used to rely on, on um, spices. Right. No, years ago they had a village, they had church in that area, they had school, they had playground and everything. Mm -hmm. And people used to rely on, on the copra, the tonka bean, the nutmeg, the dreadful people. Everything you think about, there was work land, but now since that mashup, since mm -hmm. people leave that village, live right. there, everything go back in a, abandoned, go back in forest. Right. But most of the people who used to live there either go to Blanishet or go to Matla. Right. That is why most people are the related. Oh. Either vice versa. Mm -hmm. People from Matla go to the Blanishet and right. they, had their own, they had their own um, depot. Port. They had their own wholesale place. Up in Takarim? Yeah. The house, you see the house next door? Yeah. There was where you could buy the people to buy dry goods. Oh, yeah? Yeah. All the rice, the peas, and all the things. Right. When they rip the copra, they used to carry it here. Right. And they used to buy, get the money from there. And people now, they used to take it and bring it out to either make oil mm -hmm. or whatever it is. What is copra? Coconut. Coconut. Yeah. Oh, okay. Crack it and take out the, the inside. Alright. They call it copra. Copra. Now, we used to use that to make either coconut oil mm -hmm. or lard or whatever, right. or whatever they used to use for right. a long time. But since that mashup, everybody go down to Babylon. Right. Babylon leave. Well, when I say Babylon, like, everybody leave the first. Yeah, so like Blanchard, Mashup. All that yeah. mashup and go back, go back to the natural environment, which is the first. Okay. Right. Okay. So like how the cabins came about and stuff like. Cabin up there? Yeah. Well, that started off with a guy named Justin. Justin Joseph. But he died now. Mm -hmm. Now his vision was to have a place like a sanctuary. People who hike in passing could stop, drink some water, keep the child, they could relax, spend a night. And from there, they go on to the business. So they go mad luck or go black shit or go fire up. Right. But from there, they could go any direction you want to go. Go parallel with the blanish as well. Go brasso sickle too. Go brasso sickle parry. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Parry yeah. brasso sickle mm -hmm. parry. Right? Um, well, years ago it had bridges down here in parallel, parallel Bay. You might know that. Nah. Right? Across up there. Mm -hmm. You know the original road, the original road is on top. Yeah, yeah. Right? And it going across there. Yeah. yeah. You still have uh, ruins of the It's still at there. Yeah, where it has, you sort of like that flambo. Mm -hmm. Which is coconut oil, and they used to burn whole night. So people who pass it. One other thing, the trail was well maintained. Right. Because it was too long to cut. Right. To, to, to transport the produce. Either the copra, mm -hmm. the coffee, the co um, cocoa coffee, the fish shatani. Anything to think about food wise? Was on that? It had, it have, it have, not it had, it have. Mm -hmm. it still have it. Yeah. But just that the have, forest. Just not forest take over. Mm -hmm. But if you know, if you know, you can take the trip something. Apart from that, have fruit, orange, mango, camara, okay. mango, from rose, um, balata, have a um, mamsipo. Yeah. Have. Uh, I can't remember. There's so much, mm -hmm. so much. I can't, I can't remember everything. But there is a virgin place mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. It's paradise. That is my paradise. <laughs> that is my paradise. <laughs> right. And um, how long Justin established the cabins? Uh, there's about, could be about, this year, but I mean, it's about 23 years. Rich with its biodiversity, Petit Tucker remains to be one of the most exotic and serene places to bask in Trinidad. The fauna of the forest includes deer, agouti, iguana, lap, peccaries, squirrels, 
bow constrictors, porcupine, birds, bats, and even sightings of the ocelot. A rich diversity of flora inhabits the forest, from neotropical angiosperms, mosses, lianas, shrubs, and liverworts. A variety of fungi is also prevalent along native trails. Fauna of the sea includes turtles, fishes, benthic macroinvertebrates, and microinvertebrates. Sea moss is a popular flora utilized by the people as well. The four wooden cabins are covered in Asian galvanites and nestle along the gentle slope of the Tetapra Beach. From the beach, concrete steps lead the way uphill to the main cabin and kitchen. This area has storage containers, a kitchen cabinet, a fireside and a sink with running water via a spring located high up the campsite. Butchering of any animal or fish is also done in this area by hunters or the managers. Biodegradable material is usually cast off downhill where crabs feed off and crabs in return act as bait for fishing. Coconut trees along the shoreline provide a vast of resources from tinder, water and food. East of the main cabin is a gasoline generator. With respect to renewable energy, the previous manager installed solar panels. However, these have ceased working, thus resulting in the use of the generator. Food is cooked by the fireside, fueled by dead dry wood forage from the forest. South of the main cabin is a few introduced crops such as local herbs, shrubs such as fuller grass and pomerac trees. These trees are popular with reptiles, especially war constrictors. Insects adore these plants when flooring, especially bees. The main cabin serves as the epicenter for most human activity. West of the main cabin lies three other cabins high up the gentle slope. Concrete stairs clear the pathway to them. The second cabin, Dub Studio, is big enough to facilitate three bed bunkers. Since it is wooden, it indirectly provides a habitat for insects, such as coleopteras, thermopteras, as well as anarchids. This can be served with the other two cabins, obliquely opposite each other, west of the second cabin. The bathroom area is located after the last two cabins, and like the kitchen, receives water from plumbing linked to a nearby spring higher up south of the campsite. There are two large 1,000 gallon tanks with filters south of camp, which store water collected from the spring. There is one toilet and one bathroom. Grey water runoff is northwest of the camp near cliff, which drains or leaks out into the sea. This impact can be considered minor, since on an annual basis, an estimated 1,000 persons passes by Petit Takarib. However, not all of these persons are campers. As such, grey water runoff under these circumstances can be considered insignificant, as the seawater is able to manage it. Northwest of the camp is an estimated 8 by 10 meter lawn, which is usually used for drying of clothes with lines. At one time, sea moss was harvested and processed in this area. This is no longer practice. However, the impact on grass vegetation suffered temporarily due to the lack of sunlight by pieces of wood or galvanized under the lawn area for weeks. This area is also a great local point as it is the highest within the campsite. On a calm day, large fishes such as sharks can be spotted from this point. Spearfishing is popular as the sea conditions provide a rich biota. The beach is a popular nesting site for leatherback turtles as well. The clear blue green waters coupled with wind makes it ideal for boogie boarding and swimming. Like all things in life, waste is generated. Waste from humans such as metal cans, glass, plastic and paper are buried southwest of the camp. When plastic waste can be disposed via boat, it is carried out to glassy sheds. But this is irregular, since boats pass during peak season. Waste is sometimes burnt, mostly on biodegradables, and in extreme cases, plastics. The managers understand the impact of burning plastics and make the effort to dispose via boat. Introduced plants such as citrus trees, pawpaw, and pomerac blend nicely with native species, salt of camp. Sugarcane planted is becoming an invasive company with nearby Heliconia. Since the passing of the hunting ban in 2013, hunting activity has been observed to decrease, with only a handful of witnessing accounts in Petit Hakarib and surroundings. Also, most hikers report an increase in animal sightings in the area. Impacts are inevitable in the presence of humans. 
Petit Takarib is considered to be a virgin paradise since it manages to maintain its serenity despite human presence. It is this couple with its hidden location which makes it an ideal ecotourist attraction. So I'm not here. More than a thousand. More than that. Because remember when you people pass, is that how much? Yeah. yeah. Pretty. For the present award. Mm -hmm. I have a race coming up soon. Hackathon. Yes, coming yeah. up soon. Yeah. Um you see any negative impacts being inflicted by that? By the amount of people passing through? No, not really. No. Yes, only one thing. Mm -hmm. Most people carry the water bottle. Right. Right? Totally it full on the back and right. the snack pack mm -hmm. full on the back when they eat it, they throw it on the ground. Right. European and CPEP. Uh, CPEP the they woke up here. Yeah. <laughs> so things like that, I would like to go the back. Right. Okay, and um, one more thing. What about ecotourism? Mm -hmm. I think Kititak could be a very resourceful place to, to advertise, to promote ecotourism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe. Because it start with, now it's still to see. Yeah. Right? People want. People have it to say the seat is there for grand fair or material, mm -hmm. which I don't believe in that. You see the natural environment here, right. which untouched. When I say, mm -hmm. they, I mean they're untouched here too, but I mean you see man prepare a place for them. But up there, they have, they have to prepare their own place for, for themselves. Right. When I say the turtles are not prepared all the So if you go to them, yes, I believe it will, it will, it will profit. Profit? Yeah. Okay. Okay. What um, words do you want to in, in show if anybody interested in Petit Tak? Well, I would like people to come and see what it looks like, right. to experience the ambience of the place mm -hmm. and, and my paradise. And your paradise. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will thank you so much. You're welcome. Right. Okay.